Today I'm going to show you my exact process for painting this landscape scene. I'm going to walk you through this scene step by step. We're going to cover a lot of important skills today that you will be able to transfer into your own paintings as well. Now I want you to know that this scene is really a, a quick sketch. I'm trying to get down the ideas quickly. This also illustrates that if you are thinking through values and brushwork and some of the things I'm going to talk about today, even a quick sketch like this can be effective, conveying a feeling of light and believability in your paintings. The first thing that I do before I start to paint is I think through my composition and I lay out my drawing. So here is a look at the drawing. There aren't a lot of structures, not a lot of people or cars or anything that we have to really think too precisely about. So the first thing I do is establish what part of the scene is more important. Is it what's going on on the ground or what's going on in the sky? If it's what's going on in the sky, then I lower that horizon line down to this third and let the sky be more prominent in the painting. In this case, I really like the reflection of the water, so I wanted to frame things a little bit differently, and I put my horizon line up here in the upper third to give myself more space to feature the water in the painting. Now, before I get started, I wet down the back and the front of my paper. This gives me more time to work wet into wet, and I'll show you why that's important as we move through this. So I evenly dampen the front of my paper. Now I'm ready to paint the lightest values of the scene. And if you take a look at the reference photo, the lightest values are the sky, the light on this field over here, and also the water down here. So those are the parts of the painting I need to lay in in this first wash. So I'm using a little bit of cerulean at the top of the sky. Down here for the warm part of the sky, I'm using a little bit of rose matter permanent and raw sienna. And then as I get down to the horizon line where the ground starts, that's when I'm gonna start painting some of the light colors of the trees and the greens. Now, when it comes to mixing greens, I like to use cobalt turquoise, raw sienna, and cadmium yellow medium hue. And these are Daniel Smith paints. I use the cobalt turquoise and the raw sienna for a good kind of neutral kind of olive green and where the light is more prominent, where I get that more saturated green, that's where I mix in some of my cadmium yellow. As you get down near where the water is, you'll start to see a transition from grass color to dirt color. So that I'm dropping that in now when things are wet and letting those colors just merge softly together on the paper. And now we're down to the surface of the water. And this is key. This is one of the main things I wanted to talk about today. When you're painting water, you want to start off with your lighter colors in the middle ground of the painting. And as you work down to the foreground, it's very helpful to get a strong mixture of paint. So you'll see I'm really pushing that value of blue as I get near the bottom of the painting. I really want to lead that viewer's eye into the scene. It's darker on the edges and lighter in the middle of the painting. And that's really important to drive the viewer's eye into the scene. Not only that, but that gives a feeling of believability to the water. Now let's really quickly look at this first wash. You see I laid in the value for the sky, I laid in the light area of the grasses, and then I laid down the tone for the water. The first wash is where we really get to set ourselves up for the rest of the painting. So we want to think through those bright areas of the scene and lay those in in this wash. This is what it looks like when the paper has dried. That's why we want to push those values in the first wash because when the paper dries, the colors tend to fade a little bit. So you have to compensate for that. So now we're ready to move into the large connected middle value shape of this scene. That is the area of the painting that is hardest, that most students have the hardest time grasping, that takes the longest to learn. That is to learn to group those shapes together and see them as one connected shape and see how it lays over the top of your light values. See how there's connections between all these shapes, the hills in the background, the green in the middle ground, all the way to the stronger area of the dirt over the water, right into the reflections. That's what I'm talking about, connectivity. I'm not painting each of those in separate little areas. I'm painting them in a way where they will flow into each other. And you can see that in this stage right here. That's all one big connected shape that lays over the light areas of your scene. So let's go back to the beginning of this and I'll walk you through it. Okay, so I'm gonna start over on the left side of the painting and I'm painting the background trees and I'm using a little bit more blue because I'm using cooler colors. I wanna push that into the background 
more. So there's the background cheese. I painted them all in one go here. I left a little gap because I'm gonna paint this closer up tree, but it's gonna connect right into that as well. So for that background, I'm using my same mixture of greens, cobalt, turquoise, raw sienna, maybe some raw umber, and then I'm throwing in some blue. So ultramarine blue into that mixture to cool it down to help it feel more like the background. And then as I'm moving forward, I'm warming up that mixture of paint and I'm getting a little stronger in value, which means I'm using more paint and less water. So you can see the greens here are connecting right into this. I'm letting them flow and connect one big solid shape. And I'm jumping in here to some of the darker areas around the water. I'm transitioning into some raw umber, raw sienna, some earth tones and moving right into that in this phase of the painting. And in order for the light to seem believable on the water, on the grass, we have to make sure that we paint everything dark enough. So I'm not being timid, I'm going pretty rich when it comes to these dark areas of the ground near the water. I want, I want that feeling of light to appear on the water, so I don't want my values to be too weak. Now here, as I get to the shoreline, I'm breaking that up a little bit, making some interesting marks again, painting them as connected as I possibly can. So I really simplified that shoreline, a few little broken up shapes to suggest the little bits of water and ground that are here. And now while this is damp, I'm moving into some richer paint. So I'm moving into this tree. I'm, uh, you'll notice I'm using this softer brush and I'm loading it up with a lot of paint, using a little bit of the texture of the paper to get that nice little broken edge. And that texture helps to bring that area forward. And this lack of texture, see how these lines are, are a lot smoother back here? That helps to push that area back. So we're, right here, we're using texture and value and color to make this feel closer to us than that hill in the background. And that's an important concept to remember, especially when it comes to painting landscape scenes. There's a little bit, uh, this little building here that I went ahead and added in, connected right into these darks, into this shape. And I added a few little vertical lines. Again, I really consider this a sketch, but a, a little bit of these details, a little bit of dark, a little bit of texture is enough to bring that area forward. And here's some beautiful things happening here. That, that nice broken shape on top of a softer background really gives us that feeling of depth that we're looking for. So I dropped some texture into those trees. Now I'm coming down to this area, this middle ground of the painting, and adding some more of those darks, little bits of texture to bring that area forward. Now I'm into the reflection on the water. And again, the idea here is to keep it as simple as you can. I try to use nice, clean brush marks. I don't wanna sit there and just do 100 brush marks to get one little area as much as I can. I'm trying to simplify my brushwork and not overwork the painting. It's, there's an economy of brush strokes. The least amount of brush strokes that you can use, the more fresh that your painting's gonna be. Okay, and I dragged this reflection down and dropped in a few little darks. I think one of the temptations when we see reflections is to get really into every little mark of the reflection. I really tried to simplify my brushwork, keep that as clean as possible, really state what I'm trying to state in as few marks as possible. And I touched up the shoreline just a little bit more, a few little marks that bring this area to life. And here you can see I add a few little vertical reflections of these uh, power poles that are here, any little verticals. Verticals are a great tool in our scene to lead the viewer's eye up and around the painting. And also these little lines here make the reflections look a lot more believable. So I'm not just doing a straight line down. You can see I'm breaking that line up. I'm suggesting the surface of the water with some broken lines. And you'd be surprised once you get a few of those lines in there, how effective they are. You don't need to put them all over the surface of the water, but just hint at a few, okay? So now we can kind of, we're starting to see that illusion of reflection, that feeling of water that we wanted to get. There's some weeds sticking up out of the water, some little sticks and things like that. And I'm adding those in here just to, it, it puts a little bit of interest down in the foreground of the painting and also just continues to strengthen that illusion of the surface of the water. And here is a look at that final painting. So if you can really 
think through the values through phase one of the painting where you're leaving you're painting the lightest areas phase two you're trying to find and paint that large connected middle value shape and then phase three where we go through and carefully add in the details you will be on your way to good painting have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up you find that right reference that you're excited about and then it's time to go and you feel lost you ever had that experience you just are having a hard time finding consistency some of your paintings turn out some of your paintings don't turn out and you're not really sure why well i have a free resource that i want to give to you today that can help with these problems my five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting i walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first second and third the planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone. You could print it out and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.